I'm Dr. Scott Zimmer. I'm instructor of saxophone at Grand Canyon University. Uh, congratulations on taking this next step on your musical journey. Um, aud auditions can be um, a little bit nerve wracking and a little bit challenging, but hopefully uh, some of the notes that I've taken on these pieces uh, will be helpful to you. Um, for etude number one, um, the marking on this is rustico. Uh, which basically translates to uh, rustic or rural. And the way that I took that is that it's dance-like though. So everything has to be really light on this piece here too. Um, you see words like leggero, uh, which means light, swift, and delicate. Um, and the important thing is just to not rush on this etude. Just keep the eighth notes steady as you go. Um, for etude number two, um, the marking on this one is lacrimoso, um, which basically means plaintive, sad, mournful, uh, which is kind of how the tempo sort of indicates how it is anyway. Um, lots of dynamics, lots of room for expression. Um, you have a stringendo toward the end there where you go faster and faster in tempo, followed by a a molto rallentando, which is a gradual slowing down of the tempo. Uh, when I get to that last measure, um, I really try to go for an, an a niente um, release, which is, uh, which is kind of a fade into nothing. So uh, for A2 number three, um, the Briante, which is sparkling, which is basically an aid to that really cries out for you to, you know, be showy and impress the, the adjudicators with your sparkling technique. Uh, this piece moves a lot actually, but it's important that you make sure that any articulated notes that I can hear all the pitch information on those. Um, 
And when you get to the end of it, um, the big challenge is, is, is making it sound light and effortless, um, especially when you end on that high D. The, 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 more, the more of a flute-like kind of a, of, of a tone quality you can get, the better off you're going to be. Um, Etude number four is a particularly fun one. I had, I, I had a good time preparing this one. Uh, it's, uh, it's got some, some mixed meter in here, 6-8 to 2-4, but the eighth note stays constant. So um, when I was working on this with the metronome, I made sure that I had, my, I had um, my, my dotted quarter note set at 104, and then I subdivided it into three, and that way I was able to keep the metronome on. Kept me honest, kept me, you know, kept me from rushing, um, but uh, there's, there's a lot of things happening with this, lots, lots of dynamic contrast going on. Um, the biggest challenge that I found in this piece was where to breathe, and basically there's like one place to breathe. Um, and that's at the piano in the third line from the top, um, right after that dotted eighth note. Um, the fifth etude, um, the, the larghetto, um, another expressive etude, which actually, you know, it, it, it really challenges you to, um, to, to, um, to, to almost, it's almost like an improvisatory sort, sort of a sort of approach to this though too. There are, there are a few, um, uh, markings, uh, ornamental markings, you, you see that sideways S there, it's called a gruppetto, which uh, means that you start on the note, uh, the principal note, that, that, that E, for example, in that first measure, you go to the, the next note up in the key that you're in, which would be the F sharp, you come back to that principal E, you go, you go to the note below the principal, which is a D sharp, and you come back to that E. So um, when you listen to my recording of it, you'll kind of see how I sort of put it together, and that's one of the challenges is, is making it kind of fit metronomically that way. Um, but the, the marking also says uh, appassionato e rubato, which basically means with passion and freedom of tempo. So, you know, when, you've list, when you listen to my recording of it, you'll notice that um, I had a little fun with the tempo. You know, what, what, you know it was... Uh, it's not meant to be metronomically in place. Um, you see the, the NB at the end of the first line, which means no breath. So make sure you extend that phrase all the way to that breath mark in the second bar of the second line there. Uh, one, more, one more challenge that I had with this piece here was toward the end, you know, they had that molto ritardando with those moving eighth notes. Those last two notes, the high D sharp to the high E, uh, one of the biggest challenges is those are particularly sharp notes on the saxophone, so you're gonna have to do all you can to bring those pitches down. Uh, it, it, it might mean figuring out a way to have the fingers of your right hand down, um, or to, to maybe eliminate some of the palm keys that you're using with that. Um, it's it's kind of different for everyone, it's different depending on the horn that you're playing on, but it's always important that you have a tuner in front of you when you're working on this one. and, and uh, adjudicators will be listening for that kind of thing though. So uh, those are my notes for you. Um, I hope they were helpful and good luck to you. Thank you.